I think this is a better matchup. And yes, uh, Prime Video, they getting, just to check this out, they getting my money. They getting my money for this pay-per-view. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm just like curious to know what's going to happen with this matchup because it's ch the chain. All is set ahead of the highly anticipated showdown on the 30th of March at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, USA between Tim and Sebastian Fundora. And as expected, several boxing professionals have made their final picks. Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fundora face off for our main event on March 30th at T-Mobile Arena on PBC Pay-Per-View. We will speak to Sebastian Fundora after this face off. Sizu, who was supposed to face Keith Thurman, now faces Fundora, a last-minute replacement with both the WBC and WBA belts on the line after Thurman had withdrawn due to injury, and it will be the first time Sizu will be defending the interim WBO middleweight title he won in March 2023 after knocking out Tony Harrison. Dubbed the David vs. Goliath matchup, there is no doubt that Saizu has his work cut out for him this time, as his opponent, Fundora, stands at a towering 6 feet 5 and a half inches, which is 8 and a half inches taller than the defending champion. He's 6'6". Six, six. How do you go up against someone that tall? Are you going straight for the kidneys? I reckon I'll go for the kneecaps first. Kneecaps? Are you genuinely 6'6"? Six, six? Because I'm going up against you here, I don't know. <laughs> I'm 6'5 and a half, but you know how like TV likes to lie and stretch okay. everything out. They've inflated it a little bit. You've got to punch him in the legs. That's the only option. He's. A I reckon I'll go for the kneecaps first. Saizu said when quizzed about his strategy and game plan for an opponent that tall. It's awkward, you know. You've got someone that tall, someone lanky who's got a completely different style to Thurman, someone I've been prepping for for eight weeks. But nothing phases me, nothing worries me, he added. There is no reason for me to back out, Tim said earlier in an interview. I fear no man. I know I'm the best at 154. I know what I possess. It's simple. He should be fearing me. That's the difference. In my mind, I'm in a different era to where we are now. No matter the outcome of the match, it is set to be a historic night for Tim, with the 29-year-old set to bank an Australian record $10 million from the bout. Sai Zhu is yet to lose a match in his boxing career as he went 3-0 in 2023 and is currently on an impressive streak of 24-0. The very first professional on the list is the trainer of Ryan Garcia's current trainer, Derek James. Derek James was asked about who he predicted as the winner of the matchup between Tim and Fundora. James responded, Tim is unstoppable at the moment. This thing is like something that goes round and now it's Tim's time. He must enjoy it and fight as many fights as possible before it goes to the next person. Derek just explained the reality of many fighters and how questionable boxing can be. In his formula he gave, he explained how many things in life are temporary, including the period of winning. When your period of winning comes, you keep fighting as much as you can because it won't last forever. It's Tim's time obviously, and I foresee another win for him. Tim's opponent, Sebastian Fundora, popularly known as the Towering Inferno, has lost only once so far, and that was in his most recent match against Tim's former opponent and now sparring partner, Brian Mendoza. And it is off the back of that fight that Fundora has risen up to the occasion to challenge for two titles on the 30th of March. Tim is a very tough opponent. I kinda experienced it firsthand when I went up against him, so I think he edges Fundora in his all-round game, strength, agility, speed. I think it's going to be very tough for Fundora to stand a chance. I think Tim is going to win, Mendoza said when asked about his predictions for the upcoming match. It's no surprise that Mendoza has gone on to pick Tim for the fight on Friday, given that both fighters once went head-to-head -head in October 2023, in a match where Tim was named winner by virtue of a unanimous decision. This is what it is, fighting at the top of the division. He was a better man than I. Mendoza said after the match with Tim. Of course, Mendoza's choice in predictions may have further been enforced by the fact that he recently beat Fundora, and being a piece of this fight triangle between the three fighters, he would most likely fancy the one he had lost to, to go on and beat the one he defeated. Recall that in what was a devastating knockout, Mendoza had gotten the better of Fundora last year, and if there is anyone who knows Fundora very well, it will be the 29-year-old. It's not that we went in there banking on just a knockout, Mendoza said in confident fashion after the match. You know, I was still expecting to win the second half very dominantly. That was more the goal because I don't go in there looking for one shot. I don't go in there thinking, all right, I'm just going to knock this guy out eventually. I do go in there trying to win. 
We have a game plan we follow, and that was the thing. Apart from highlighting the importance of his game plan in getting the better of Sebastian Fundora, Mendoza also went on to point out one key factor that Tim might look back on and capitalize on to his advantage, which is the defensive frailties in Fundora's fighting. And you know, thankfully, as soon as the second half started, I caught him with that shot. And absolutely, I was saying that even in the buildup, you know, I felt like he had a lot of defensive flaws and I was just, you know, the guy to finally take advantage of it. Even though Mendoza, a fighter that Tim beat, had gotten the better of Fundora, there is no hard and fast rule, as every match is different and every fighter approaches a fight with a different strategy, different attitude, and a different energy. Also, Tim, on his part, should be wise to not ignore some of the additional comments Mendoza had made after defeating Fundora. According to the 30-year-old, it was a very tough fight against Sebastian Fundora. Thus, the fact that Mendoza could beat Fundora definitely does not mean that it's going to be a walk in the park for Tim. We knew it was going to be an ugly fight, Mendoza added. You know, just stylistically and everything we knew what we were getting into. And, you know, we knew we'd probably have to not so much give away early rounds, but just, you know, just put work in the bank. You know, and it would pay dividends in the later half, the second half of the fight. And that's exactly what happened. Once that second half started, you know, trainer Ismail Salas told me, Hey, we're entering the second half. Start putting some real heat on those shots. You know, start really popping a little more. Because we really spent the first half finding the openings and, you know, trying to break him down a little bit here and there. And that's what it was, man. I finally, it was, you know, some certain angles and stuff we were working on in the gym throughout camp. And everything that we knew would pay off in the fight. And it worked out, you know, because it was stuff I was using in camp, in sparring and everything. I was like, I know I'm landing this in sparring. I know it'll play out on fight night. You know, it was just one of those things. It was game plan stuff. And through that, finally, once I landed that shot, at first I didn't realize just how heavy it had landed. But, you know, once I took that step back and saw that he was already basically gone, but the referee wasn't jumping in yet, and I wasn't going to let him take a knee and bounce back like he did with Lubin. So that's why that killer instinct just jumped in. I said, you know, the fight's not over. He's still on his feet, so we've got to get him out of here. Mendoza's comments do shed some light on the resilience of Fundora's character in the ring. More like saying, the 26-year-old American is not down until he's fully down. Sebastian Fundora had built a reputation of being an excellent fighter over the years, and it's no surprise that he was unbeaten until he faced Brian Mendoza. Given his antecedents, it is difficult to ever rule out Fundora making an emphatic comeback when he faces Sizu on Saturday. I think the kid is a great fighter. When I look at him, he has a bright future. He is one of the young American fighters who has impressed me a lot, Floyd Mayweather SNR once said of Fundora during earlier years in boxing. Save for his height, Sebastian Fundora is one fighter that can be easily underrated due to his slim and lanky physique. Born to a family of fighters, it should however not surprise anyone how talented Fundora is, though due to his lanky and skinny physique, boxing promoter Samson Lukowitz, who introduced into the sport world-renowned boxers like David Benavidez, Sergio Martinez and Manny Pacquiao, had initially declined the opportunity to work with Sebastian Fundora until he watched the lanky boxer who was the 19-year-old fight in a match that ended up clearing whatever doubts he had forever. Sometime I make a big mistake that is going all the way. An example, Sebastian Fundora, the father called me so many times and he sent me pictures and he sent me videos of Sebastian Fundora. And I said, really, I cannot help you because he's too fragile, your son. Lukowitz was quoted saying in an interview, Fundora would, however, later get an opportunity to showcase his talent. And upon seeing firsthand how good the young American was, Lukowitz couldn't help but acknowledge how good a very young Fundora was. The first fight I saw him in was against Victor Tony. Lukowitz was quoted saying, Tony looked like the former heavyweight champion James Tony with his body and all. Sebastian, then 19, beat this guy badly and showed how much power he has. Then I took him to my country, Uruguay, in a tough fight, and I took him to Argentina, another tough fight. That's two fights in one month, and I bring him back, and I say I have a champion. I don't like to invest in something I don't believe in, so I put him to the test, and he proved me totally wrong. But I tell you, every time I see him in the arena, I think, how can someone so skinny have so much power? 
I'm still surprised by his performance. It is safe to say that if Tim looks at Fundora with those lenses Lukowicz once used, that Fundora is too fragile to be so much of a challenge, then he would be playing right into the hands of the 26-year-old. Last minute change in opponent, obviously. Everyone's talking about it. I know you're probably sick of hearing about it, but this- I was working with my dad. We were doing a fence, or I forgot what it was. It was last year, so, but we were busy. Uh, with the fight with Mendoza, of course, I lost that fight, but I felt that fight was pretty easy before that, and uh, I'm just gonna do my thing, worried about what Sebastian Fundora can do. Only a boxer and his trainer on a daily basis know the fighter. Sebastian Fundora's father and trainer, Freddie Fundora, once said, Everybody else is outside of the boxing ring, so we have to prove it with action. I actually like it that people think he's fragile. It fits perfectly to our agenda. They'll learn pretty fast. And true to the words of Fundora Sr., the boxing world has definitely learnt really fast how much of a talent Sebastian Fundora is, as he is currently undoubtedly one of the best boxers in his weight category. There is little wonder that his fight against Tim on the 30th is garnering so much attention and anticipation despite Fundora being a last-minute replacement. A fighter of his quality going side-by-side -side with a fighter of Tim's quality is definitely a mouth-watering prospect. I think I'm excited about the upcoming fight between Tim and Fundora. They are two very good fighters. It's going to be an interesting one. It's sad that Keith Thurman can't get involved in the fight with Tim anymore, but Sebastian Fundora is a good option. I think they could match each other," Jeff Mayweather said in an interview. Mayweather had recently tipped Thurman to get the upper hand over Tim, but this time he thinks the 29-year-old has got the upper hand against his opponent. Like I said, they are both good fighters, but I'm going to go Tim. He is the current champion, and I think he can beat Fundora to defend his belt and take up the other title on the line as well. Tim comes into Saturday's match after his famous victory against Mendoza. Tim made the statement he needed to in his final fight in Australia before heading overseas, where he defeated American Brian Mendoza by unanimous decision 116, 111, 116, 112, 117, 111 to defend his WBO junior middleweight belt. Australian boxing legend Jeff Fenich had warned earlier that Mendoza was a dangerous opponent, but Tim said pre-fight people would be using that word to describe him after Sunday's title defense. This kid's dangerous, he told Main Event when asked what the world would be saying about him after the fight. Tim had his fair share of doubters from over in the States heading into Sunday's fight, with Shakur Stevenson predicting Mendoza to take the win while describing the Australian as nothing too special. But there was something special about the way Tim effectively reduced his world-class rival to a mere punching bag by the end of Sunday's fight, earning a unanimous decision win. Mendoza came out of the blocks aggressive early, surging forward, but a calm and collected Tim was hardly phased by his rival's surprising approach. Two-time welterweight champion Sean Porter had said pre-fight that Mendoza needed to find a way to make Tim uncomfortable early and liked what he saw early. It wasn't necessarily that Mendoza was finding success, but that at least he was trying something different. I didn't expect this from him. I didn't expect this dynamic to start the fight, Porter said in commentary. I like this start from Mendoza. He needs to start fast. The second round followed in similar fashion, with both fighters cautious as to not open themselves up too much to counters, with Tim's right hand particularly quick in following up. Tim, though, was patient too in picking his moments, as he did at the end of the second round scoring a clean one. 2. Mendoza, to his credit, continued to disrupt Tim's ability to really settle into a rhythm with his footwork and hand speed while landing a few shots of his own. But Tim again scored another clean one, two in the middle of the fourth round with Porter describing it as the cleanest two punches of the fight by that point. The Australian then landed a big uppercut in the fifth that cut Mendoza open and seemed to sense his moment, swarming with a few more pinpoint shots to press the American towards the ropes. Mendoza later fired back with an uppercut of his own, but Tim was unbothered, continuing to pressure the challenger and close out his best round of the fight. Brian Mendoza is in a bit of strife, Ben Damon said in commentary. He's been marked up badly. There's swelling and damage on both sides of the face. Tim, when he needed to, went to a new level. 
and Tim had another level left in him, rocking Mendoza once more with another uppercut in the seventh. But the American, seemingly on the brink of going down, was somehow able to not only stay on his feet, but work towards the body of Tim to briefly keep the Australian at bay. Still, Tim continued to stalk Mendoza as he sensed the finish was near, with the Gold Coast crowd cheering him on. In the end, Mendoza was able to last until the bell, as the fight went into an eighth round, with Tim well and truly in control at that point. Tim refused to let up in the ensuing rounds, but Mendoza, once again, didn't just stay on his feet, but also punched back with some power of his own. The challenge for Mendoza, however, was that he had taken plenty of damage in the process, and with his energy sapped, it was growing increasingly challenging for him to find the decisive blow to turn the fight back in his favor. Tim continued to pile on the damage in the 10th round too, but somehow Mendoza just would not go down, even as the Australian effectively turned his challenger into a stationary punching bag. He's just a bully, Porter said of Tim, who showed no remorse as he hunted for a finish, with Damon describing him as animalistic. In the end, Tim couldn't find the finish, although that said more about Mendoza's toughness as the American somehow stayed up until the final bell and may have even taken the last round. As said earlier, Fondora also comes into this match after facing Mendoza. Sadly, he was on the losing side. Brian Mendoza sent shockwaves through the 154-pound division after he knocked out Sebastian Fundora in their Showtime main event. The knockout came at 39 seconds of the seventh round, 20. The win gave Mendoza the interim WBC title at 154 pounds in what was his 22nd win and 16th knockout victory, suffering only two losses in the course of his career. Mendoza was an enormous underdog here, with this expected to simply be another stay busy type of fight for Fondora, as he waited his turn for a major fight. And Fondora, the 6'6 southpaw, was in control of the fight, doing some good work, before he was simply dropped hard, and Fondora was aware, but he took the full 10 count. It was obviously a massive win for the 29-year-old Mendoza, who rocketed into true relevance in one of boxing's tougher divisions, and a huge, huge setback for Fondora. Mendoza's victor and victim fight it out on Saturday. Watch out who emerges victorious. Six. How do you go up against someone that tall? You going straight for the kidneys? I reckon I'll go for the kneecaps first. Kneecaps? Are you genuinely 6'6"? Six, six? Because I'm going up against you, I don't know. <laughs> I'm 6'5 and a half, but you know how like TV likes to lie and stretch okay. everything out. They've inflated it a little bit. You gotta punch him in the legs. That's the only option. He's a f If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly react by clicking the like button. For the very best updates on news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to turn on notifications to get alerted when we drop quality contents like this. Until next time, peace out.